So for the next set of exercises, I'll go up to the file menu, choose open, that takes me back to the working folder, and then I'll open up a file called posters01. So this contains some shapes that might look familiar, and we're going to change some of the colours that are on this artboard. So I'll need to go to the window menu and go down the list to swatches. It opens up on screen. From here, then I can uh, hover over the bottom edge, drag that down to reveal them. There's quite a few colours in there. It's a nice compact view, but it doesn't give us the opportunity to see the names. You can hover your cursor over the swatch thumbnails, and then it will reveal in a tooltip the swatch names. But you're probably more likely to want to go to show list view if you're presented with a lot of swatches and you need to isolate one that you want to use. The only downside is that you'll have to make this panel much taller to save yourself scrolling up and down it constantly. From here, I've got a group of swatches that are for the art board called Wildlife. We've got sun, leaf, tree, canopy, and so on and so forth. Now there are subtle differences between these. So if I was going to edit one in here called tree canopy, I'm going to hover my cursor over that. And if you wished, you could hover over the actual color chip itself and double left click. Now this will open up swatch options. So if I just move this to the side, making sure that the preview checkbox is turned on, I can edit that color and it will update the artwork where it's applied anywhere in this document. So if I change these to 66, hit the tab key 20, tab key 100, and then finally 35, you'll notice that those colors change in there. When I click OK, they're now done. And that's really handy. Now it does that because it's what's classed as a global color. Notice though that the leaf in here is not. So if I want to edit this one, that is, as you might guess, applied to the leaves in the illustration. So I'm just going to pick up my zoom tool and zoom in a little bit closer so we can see these side by side. I'm going to hover my cursor over the leaf chip in there and double left click. Again, I'll just turn on the preview checkbox and then swipe over the values in here and change them to 60, 6, 96 and 0. Notice on this occasion the leaves don't change. And the reason is because the global checkbox isn't turned on. So if you do create a color and use it in your document, if global checkbox is not turned on, then you just have a color that's in your swatches panel that you can use in your document, but it's not linked to your artwork. In most cases, I would tend to suggest turn on the global checkbox. Now you'll notice that the leaf color chip in the swatches panel now has a little white triangle in the lower right hand side, which indicates that it is a global swatch. The only downside is that because we've now turned this into a global color, Illustrator treats this as a completely new color and we'll have to reapply this. So click OK. I then go to the tools panel, choose the third tool down, which is the magic wand, make sure it's active and then double left click on the symbol of the magic wand to open up the magic wand panel. And from here, well, it's remembered the fill color options that I used in the previous chapter. I'm going to change the tolerance in here to something quite low, like three. And then I'm going to hover my cursor over one of those leaves and left click. Now you notice it doesn't select it. And the reason for that, well, if something doesn't work inside of Illustrator, it generally is related to the layers panel. And that's because those leaves are in a layer called artwork and it's locked. So if I unlock it, hover my cursor over that uh, leaf and left click, it now selects all those leaves. I can then go to the swatches panel. And in this occasion, I need to, when I apply this color, I need to make sure that the fill icon is at the front. If it's left clicked and the stroke is in front, then I'm changing the stroke color but you'll need to hover over and left click on the fill icon in there to make sure it's at the front and active. And then I'll go down and left click on leaf and that now applies it. I'll go to the select menu. I'll choose deselect and I'll close down the magic one panel and then go back to my selection tool, go to the view menu and then choose fit art body window. So those are the differences between local and global colors. Wherever possible, if you can create swatches that are global, when you apply them to your artwork and you then make subsequent changes to the swatch, those edits will be automatically reflected in the objects where you applied them.